Yo, what's up? Happy Friday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah. It's J-Man Manero with J-Man Speaks. Coming to you live and direct from our global headquarters here in Rochester, New York. That's right, folks. Today we're talking with A-Team Friday. The expert, Jeremiah. It's J-Man Manero. You know, half the time I have experts. The other half of the time, I just don't feel like it. <laughs> we got a hard stop today, though, at 929. We got to head over to Clubhouse for... Uh, an event that we're guest speaking at in there, in the club. If not in the club, hit me up. I'll send you an invite. I have a hundred to give away to invite you to. And we got a club on there called Good Morning Real Estate. So make sure to follow that. But today in Ask the Experts, Anything Meaningful Fridays, we are talking about working with buyers in a changing market. And what I can guarantee, uh, we got Jeffrey Scott saying good morning. We also have Billy Parrott from Billings, Montana. We also have Abigail Troutman. Thank you, Abigail. She's from Charlotte. I do believe. I do believe. Uh, do, 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 do. But if, you're, if your market is not changing yet, is what I'm going to say. Yet! Because it will be changing. Uh, we're starting to see it. We're starting to see it a little bit. You know, in the height of the frenzy, you could put up any dog, to be quite honest, and be like, oh, yeah, it needs a new roof. Oh, yeah, put it on. People wave the inspect. It doesn't, didn't matter. Right. I was working with buyers at a certain point. They were like, I was like, what are you looking for? A house uh, with a roof and doors and windows. I'm like, oh, OK, I think we could do that. I think we could definitely do that. I'm going to do this back like this for a second and then go like this and fix that. All right. Just some camera things that bother me. So a uh, number of things we're going to talk about. I think I'm going to start out with open houses uh, last week. If you tuned in last week, if you didn't go back and watch the replay, uh, I talked a lot about door knocking, but now I'm going to talk. I want to start out with door knocking for open houses and how to pick up buyers there. Door knocking for your buyers, how that works, and then building realistic expectations and how I do that. And then there was something else that we're going to, but I'm also willing to answer all of your questions as we go. And we got Rachel. Rachel Dope. Yo, Rachel is so dope. That's what we're going to call you. Rachel is so dope. Dopelt. I don't know. I can't say your last name, but I like it. I like it. Okay. So first things first, J-Man does all the knocking. Okay. What I like to do when it comes to, let's start with the open houses. Uh, we, we all know that open houses are not the number one way that properties sell, nor do you really need to in a, in a seller's market. However, open houses historically have been a great way for you to pick up potential buyers. And so that comes in in the beginning. Uh, before the open house, what we would do is we actually, we send postcards to the neighborhood saying, um, they're actually just listed, they're, they serve two purposes. Just listed, uh, pick your neighbors, but then also uh, open house, whatever that date might be. And if it's like a two to four, if you normally do to a two hour open house, then what I would do is from 1.30 to two is a neighbors only open house. Why? Because I'll, I'm gonna invite the nosy neighbors because why the hell wouldn't I? It's just more people for me to meet, more opportunity to get get listings and and potential buyers. I can tell you in the neighborhood that I I live in, neighbors actually move within the neighborhood. Like it's so hard to get into this neighborhood. There's not a lot of uh, properties that change over that somebody might move across the street because they want more space, uh, an in ground pool or something like that, rather than rather than do the addition. So we send that out. Then what we would do is go and you know, an hour before the open house, after you put up your signs and your balloons and you bake your cookies, whatever the hell you do for your open houses, um, traditionally that you would do for your open houses, we then go and just door knock the neighborhood, right? However much time you have, if you have, if you get there an hour early and they're supposed to get there, get everything set up an hour early and then go and, and you know, hit 20 houses, 30 houses with your extra postcards with information about the property. Uh, we have a in-house marketing team, but if you don't, there's plenty of companies that can print those postcards for you. Just do a Google search. I don't, I'm not connected with any right now. So then we go around and say, hey, everybody, we're just doing an open house. Neighbors only are invited from 1.30 to 2. Or if they're like, oh, man, we're really busy, then do it at the end. Say, okay, you know what? We'll stay from 4 to 4.30. All right. Now, when we invite them to the open house, we have something called an open house bot. Let me see. I'm going to share the screen real quick. Didn't work. Where are you, my friend? Okay, hold on one second. 
and go this way, and then I'm going to share this. Yeah, there we go. All right, so primary, my primary screen here. With the open house bot, the way it works, if you just go, I, that's why I put all this stuff in the comments before we started so that I can reference it and you can check it out. Uh, but with an open house bot, uh, we do have a COVID questionnaire built in there, which we can, we're probably going to take out soon. It could be a separate link altogether, but just, just imagine when they come in instead of please sign into my open house. My name is Fred Flintstone and I still do things from, you know, 1954, probably when that started, uh, we have, please scan, please scan or text as you come in to register. So they can scan a QR code at the door. You could have a sign made uh, as well. This says, please, you know, scan this QR code to register for the open house. This way, depending on what your COVID regulations are still, um, you know, you, you have the open house questionnaire built in. We have a welcome to the property brochure. All of this is digital because, again, it's giving you the appearance of being tech savvy when you're not. Uh, and we offer this product. It's absolutely a one-time investment. But digital business card and then where you get into it is really the home equity estimate and dream home flows because if the way this flow starts out we ask the question are you working with an agent if they say no then the flow continues if they say yes then we stop because what you should be doing at the open house is defining uh determining prospects from suspects right prospects are people that you want to work with suspects are yeah don't matter you're trying to sell the suspects to the house i'm not saying that in a bad way uh, but prospects are somebody that you could potentially convert because they're not working with an agent. A suspect is somebody who already has an agent. And you say, okay, feel free to check out the house. If you have any questions, let me know. Right? Pour your love onto the people that have the ability to work with you in the future. Okay? Any questions about that? All right. Oh, we got Tracy on. Hey, Tracy, we're going to add you too. I'm going to give you the shout out. Everybody gets a shout out. Today we're in Wisconsin, New York, Montana. Oh, we got Leticia back over here too. All around the world. <laughs> um, I discovered not too long ago that I have this musical intelligence that allows me to tie in anything that's said ever into a song. We should do a live stream about that someday. Okay, um, there's that. Let me come back over here for a second. Boop. Come on. Everything's so laggy today. Okay. Now, door knocking a neighborhood for a buyer that you're working with, right? If you're working with a buyer, they're extremely frustrated. They're going to get to a point like, Leticia, you know, what do you think we should do? We've lost five houses or Billy or Rachel. You, you, you have this conversation at some point where even Tracy, right? You're in Wisconsin. Uh, maybe just put in the comments, how do you see your market? Is it balanced still? Is is it starting to change? Or are you still seeing a crazy seller's market? Because it's it's going to come to a point where they go, I want to take a break. Or I'm so frustrated. I don't, I don't know what to do. And I motivate people for a living, right? And there's times where I had a buyer who was like, I think you've heard me say 20-something offers. And they're like, we want to write an offer. In my mind, I'm going, why? Why? We keep losing. <laughs> Why do you want to do this to yourself, right? But I have to switch my mindset and go, you know what? You're absolutely right. Let's write an offer because it only takes one, right? It all Everything happens for a reason. One day we're going to be sitting around your kitchen table at your house housewarming party telling this great story about the journey that you got to this destination. But you got to stay motivated. However, um, if and when they do decide to take a break, you got to have that conversation and say, all right, here's here's one more thing before you take a break. But are, are we taking a break? Like, is this boyfriend, girlfriend take a break and then they go cheat on each other? Is that is that what it is? Because I don't want that kind of break here in real estate with our real estate relationship. Meaning, okay, you say you're gonna take a break. Does that mean you're gonna try out other buyer's agents? If so, we have an exclusive right to represent. I'd rather, this is what I would, you gotta just nip this. Say, I would rather let you go now to explore other opportunities than to continuously work vigorously on your behalf because my next strategy is to door knock the neighborhood you want to live in. And then they're going to go, door knock? What, what, do, neighborhood we wanna, what, what do you mean? 
well, listen, I only provide this level of service to those who are, you know, who are committed to me exclusively. So you tell me the areas you want to live I, and, and the exact property you want, something with four bedrooms, something with one, you know, one bed, whatever it is in this range. And I will then, because this is where you tie in the data, right? You go to a program like Remind, Remind.com. You look at the neighborhood that they want to live. And I'm not going to door knock every single house. I'm going to no door knock the houses that have a high seller score. Okay. And then I'm going to say, knock, knock, knock. If we go back. Oh, I should put, let me see. I still got a doorbell queued up. A door. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Oh, man. It's so freaking laggy. It bothers me big time. Da, 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 da. All right, coming back. To, oh, there's there's a door. Okay, come over here. Knock, 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 knock. Hello, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Look, at, I'm not here to try to list your home or anything like that. What I do have is a buyer who is looking in this neighborhood for a four bedroom, one bath, a 1,500 square foot Cape Cod, and and this is your home because I've researched this ahead of time. I've selected the homes that meet. My buyer's criteria, see, so I'm very selective. And yours is one of the chosen few. What? You're one of the chosen few? That's so exciting, right? Rather than saying, I'm door knocking any house, my buyer's going to buy anything. And I would say, you know, because you're one of the chosen few, we are uh, willing to, with your permission, I can walk through the house. It doesn't have to be now when you're ready, a day or two from now when get the house ready and, and put it in its best light. Let us come through, and then what we can do is write you an offer. And you're like, what do you mean? You don't want to list the house? No, I don't want to list the house. Hell no, actually. I got the buyer. I got the buyer. And look at our tagline is real estate superheroes. Look, this is what we do. We make it a great day every day with every buyer that we work with. So when you, when you tell them that strategy, they're going to go, what? Um, do we go together or not? So Leticia, your question, do you mean, uh, with the buyer? No, no, I wouldn't go with the buyer cause that may, it would make it awkward. I would just let them know. Um, and this is where like video can come in too. If you're connected with them on messenger, you're connected with them on IG. I'd be like with my phone, let me get my phone out. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm out here door knocking for you. I'm going to find you the home of your dreams. Okay. Because they're going to talk about that stuff. Every day they're having a conversation about how the real estate experience is. Okay. It can be spectacular and they can talk about all the things that you're doing to go above and beyond. Or it could be like, oh, I haven't heard from my agent since the last offer that we did not get. I'm really frustrated. What are they doing anyways? And you're working harder than ever. I know I'm, I'm working harder than ever in my entire life working with these buyers. Um, as many houses, as many offers as you write. Coffee is for closers. All right, so you get that? You see how that's like outside the box thinking, right? Say yes. Um, but these are all conversations going from 90 to 70, 70 miles per hour. I like that. I'm going to go back to the single overlay. Here we go. Let's see how long this takes to switch over. Okay. Man, glitchy is AF. There's nothing, I get distracted easy, e really easy, but when it comes to the internet and camera and live streaming, when stuff is slow and the camera doesn't look right, like I see it right now, um, it bothers me. I got to go like this, make that a little bigger. Boom. See what I mean? Bada bing, bada boom. All right. So we have those two strategies or three strategies, really open houses, the open house bot, door knocking around the open house, and then uh, door knocking a neighborhood for a buyer that you're working with. And it's really important, like narrow it down. Even if you want to, you could soften up that, that door knock a little bit more and send a, a handwritten letter from you. Cause it's not going to be a hundred houses it's gonna be like five, be like 10, 20, whatever the neighborhood is a handwritten note. And you could, it could be a uh, kind of a standard, right? Hand write it once and then scan it in and then make a PDF of it. But so it looks handwritten but you don't have to write it a hundred times. Exactly like I said, uh, I we have a buyer that's looking for whatever the property is. Your property meets this criteria. Uh, you're one of the selected few. If you give us the opportunity, we'd be willing to write an offer um, upon seeing the property. 
the buyer is pre-approved or the buyer is paying cash, the buyer, whatever the, the terms are. And we'd be l willing to give you more than enough time to find a place to move to. Okay. All right. Next, uh, creating realistic expectations. I got eight minutes to wrap this up. Pow, 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 pow. Going a hundred miles a minute. Uh, creating realistic expectations. We like to do that with bomb bomb. Uh, we do that in the beginning. Okay. In the beginning when we're working with the buyers, but then throughout the process, um, we'll show you our bomb bomb. Do, 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 do. I'm going to swing over here again. Oops. If you want a free trial of bomb bomb, go to bomb.jmanseminars.com. That's bomb.jmanseminars.com. Uh, you're going to get all of my templates in there. Um, if you're looking for a CRM, if you send the message CRM, it's going to reply back with a free trial from Wise Agent, and Wise Agent will have all of my templates in there as well. We worked out a deal where um, agents kept contacting me for my templates for all this this copy that I created um, or adapted or ripped off and duplicated over the years and changed it to make it my own. Uh, so rather than you have to contact me, I'm trying to make it easier. If you do a free trial with BombBomb or free trial with, uh, with Wise Agent, uh, you'll get these. So that this might be harder for you to read, but let me just zoom it up. Zoom, zoom, zoom in a room, room. All right. So this will most likely happen. You will not be told how much money to bring till closing to the day of closing. You may write a dozen offers before getting one accepted. I might change this to say 20 offers now. Uh, you have an offer accepted, and this is maybe different in your state. We're in an attorney state. Uh, I know downstate, like Rachel, and you, you're watching. I think Chicago. Are you an attorney? Say, just put it in the in the comments whether you're attorney or title. So for us, we can have an offer. We write contracts, but they're still contingent on attorney approval. So somebody still could write an offer in that attorney approval period, and you're up the, up the creek. Downstate New York, you they write offers to purchase, which then goes to an attorney to mess up. And I know that's a longer period, and there is no real binding contract at that point, and it all depends on the on the on the listing agent. I've heard stories of agents in competitive offers. Never mind, I won't say. Trying to send an envelope to the agent. This is way back in the day. Send an envelope to the agent, like like have our offer accepted. You know what's in the envelope, right? All right. <clears throat> you have an offer accepted, the attorney may disapprove. You have friends and families who want to counsel you on how how and what should be happening in the real estate transaction. This will happen with millennials and your Z-Gen coming, moving forward. Uh, they have helicopter parents, <laughs> right? They haven't purchased a home in the last 30 years, but they know what the market is. Oh, this house is so overpriced. Oh yeah, I could tell by the 17 offers that they all went over asking, but you wanted to rate 20% below. Hmm. I'd rather turn you down now than let you down later. Uh, you may see a property online available on a website. Call me to see it. When I when I call, they tell me it's sold. You know, there's certain sites that rhyme with pillow in that where uh, they're not updating their information or the agent hasn't moved it to pending or under contract, depending what your market says. Explain this to the buyer because if they call you, you call the agent. The agent says an offer is accepted and they see it still active the next day or the week after, they're going to think you're lying and then they're going to move on to another agent. Um, and then for us, you see this part at the bottom. You can't see that part at the bottom because I haven't moved it up. <sighs> okay, I gotta figure out what screen I'm on. Da -da -da -da. Okay, and then the 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 video that's American embedded dream. is very simple. Make it a great day. Whoop! Here we go. Hi, this is Jeremiah. It's J-Man Monero with the Monero team at XYZ Realty. Hopefully your favorite realtor. I just wanted to send you a quick email that says, you know, these things will happen in the real estate transaction. When you think about real estate, think about the Monero team where you're architects of the American dream. Okay, that's it. And then give them that stuff to read. The second one that we send out, um, is this it? Yeah. Uh, as a buyer, things you absolutely should not do, right? We have don't quit your job, don't change your job, don't buy any large ticket items, don't make any David Copperfield deposits, don't speak with sellers directly, okay? And then just a whole list of things. Because common sense isn't common, folks. You have to make sure you break it down for them and say, don't do these things. It can cost you your transaction, okay? Don't wait to find the absolute perfect house. 
Uh, don't go home to sleep on it. In a hot market, you may sleep in it. Or if you sleep on it, you won't sleep in it, right? Uh, I've used that before. It's kind of funny, but really true. Don't forget the 80-10-10 rule. If you find a house that's 80% of what you're looking for, 10% of the things you can change, and 10% of the things you cannot live with, it's a keeper. That's like for life, right? If you can find a spouse like that. <laughs> oh, dude, I am cracking myself up. All right. So that's basically it. Let me come back over here. Any questions on that and how you can how could you can use it? Yeah, so Billy, you're in a title state in Montana. You guys don't know what closing late is like. I'm going to come back over here for a second. Come on, let's switch it up. Oh, that's so glitchy. Oh, my goodness. Um, we got four minutes left, folks. Hit me with your questions quick. Uh, what, what I want to say is if you're – right now you have to talk to the buyers and say, look, at our market is changing. Um, use stories. What I would do is send them comparables when you do see something that closed for below asking. Find those ones. They'll say, look, this one sold for 95%. Um, I know I had a listing – Two weeks ago, we listed at 129.9. It sold for 128.9. I sent that to the buyer and I said, Look it, market's changing. Come back with us. Let's go. And if you keep dripping on them that way and telling them relative stories, uh, we had a new listing that went in two days ago. It was two days ago, went in yesterday. Uh, and I, I sent it to a buyer who's taking a break. I'm still going to keep them in the loop and say, Hey, I understand you're taking a break, uh, but, but it is. If you still want me to be your exclusive buyer's agent, I'm not going to stop, okay? Because I don't want you to miss the home of your dreams. I'm still here for you. Uh, look at the photos. Look at the videos I send you. Uh, because you can market to your own exclusive buyers before properties hit the market. That's not a problem. It's when you publicly market them uh, to everybody, right? Publicly uh, advertise it to everybody that it has to be in within one business day. So... Keep the buyers in the loop. Let them know, right? When your photographer sends you the photos and the and the video before it hits the market, boom. Give them some exclusive stuff. And I'm just doing that to say, look, at once this does sell, then I'm going to say, look, this is what it's sold for. And keep giving them those relative stories. Oh, we have um, Jeffrey Scott Stanton before we go. He, Jeffrey, shameless plug, Scott Stanton. <laughs> he is... Uh, I'm going to be – in Tuesday, I'm going to be in the New York area. Uh, you, you saw some links up above. We're doing a free class with the Charter Real Estate School. Uh, but on Tuesday, I'm going to be in the corporate office with Dr. Jeffrey Scott Stanton. And we're going to be uh, going in a little bit deeper into the door knocking along with NLP, uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming. We're going to give you scripts to download. It's going to be really in-depth. Uh, Tuesday at noon, you could tune in for that very special broadcast Live and direct from New York, New York. That's going to be pretty exciting. So make sure to tune in. It's 929. I got to go, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Relative stories are money. Abigail, you got it. Totally take the buyer's. Talk. Take the buyer's wall down naturally. It's also called the relative story close. You guys should all connect. If you're commenting on this, you're all really cool people from all across the country. We got North Carolina. We got New York. We got Chicago. We got Wisconsin. We got uh, Montana. Feel free to connect. This is Jeremiah. It's J-Man Monero. J-Man Speaks. Make it a great day. Come see me at Clubhouse if you want another minute.